Hi. In uh, for the video, how to create a drop-down list in Bubble, we had a question, um, basically how to store the chosen option into the database. So it looks like the question is how to save the data. Um, and there's a variety of ways you can do this, especially in this kind of scenario. So uh, it looks like this person is, the user is choosing between a dog and a cat. Um, so what we could do is have an option set that we create, um, but we'll get into that here in just a second. So if, say, I have a user make, it, it's really contextual based on what you're actually going to do. So if I have, say, let's pick my drop down list real quick here. I can go in here, I can make static choices that are cat, dog, and I could have that data in there. I could also go in and I, I can do static or dynamic choices. I could do dynamic choices and have it so I have somewhere where I'm adding in a group of choices, or I can basically just create the types of choices I want with that, but that's a totally different video. Let's just do dog and cat here very easily. All right, so when we open that, I can just click down dog or cat, but let's just basically make this a, we'll call it a help request, so title this to our appointment request appointment request do a different one yep, there we go nice and big um, and we'll sh show how this gets saved in the database so so choose your option we'll put animal Actually, this should be your name, animal, and then we would do something here like pet name. There we go. And then we need some way of contacting them, so we'll do email, email address. And we can define the content type, so if we do like an email in here, then it will only allow you to put email addresses in here. So like if somebody types in abcd.com, it won't work. You would have to have the at symbol somewhere, right? So it would be joe at john.com. Wonderful. So we've got this data, and then to actually enter it and save it, we need to have some kind of an action that tells the system to do that. We'll just create a quick button here. We'll click to request save and we'll do data and things will create a new thing and then this is just a site that I use for making all kinds of random stuff so I'm gonna create a new type here and I will do that a appointment this is the simplest way to do it for this kind of thing you could do a few different things though and we'll discuss that in a second we add just different fields and the field name here, well, let's make this a text field. Um, customer name. And we will add the phone number. Oops, it was email, wasn't it? We did email. Will be text. There we go. And then we will do pet type. Pet type will be text because we're just going to save that over. Um, and then we're also going to do a so then we had pet name. Pet name, which will also be text. And we just grab these from the boxes input pet names if my internet doesn't glitch out well that was different right, so input pet names value value there we go and this one will be input emails value this will be drop down animals value, and this will be pet name. Input 
pet name value. See, I made a mistake up here. I did accidentally input pet name. It should be input your name's value. There we go. So that will save that data when we click it. And then every time we put data in, let's reset relevant inputs. That way we have all this data is going to go in here and it's just going to give us that data. Uh, this isn't like choosing out appointments or anything. That'd be a much larger function. This is more of the idea of, hey, this is the data from someone who wants an appointment so we can email them and find the time that would work best for them. And then I always like to just make a quick repeating group to make sure it's working. So we'll just grab a repeating group, draw it there, and then we will grab text. And we'll do, oops, I'm gonna define here, the data source and the type of content. So the type of content here will be exactly what we just created, which was a Wow, sorry, I've got a bunch of different stuff in here from different little side projects. Let me go back here and new appointment, that's what I called it. Okay, so this one, the type of content here would be an appointment, and we want to do a search for an appointment. We don't need to add any constraints, it's a very simple one. And then we add text here. We would just do search dynamic, sales appointments, customer name, and then we could even Space, space, space. You can do one space too, it works. Sometimes I just do extras to make sure it's dividing right, but it's just not usually a problem. It's just something I like to do. And then make it look nice depending on the font and stuff, but there we go. So that should do everything we need it to here. There we go. So we have my name and then the animal type and then the pet name will be Rufus. And an email. Enter request, there we go. We can also see where that data is located inside the app. So if we go to app data and we go to appointments, It'll pull up all the appointments there. Um, this just, and whenever it's, there's anything in app data, that means we can, any one of these fields, we can go in and we can grab, we can use this data for things. So we could run a count of all appointments that were set on October 15th for create date, right? We just have to build reports for it. So um, just make sure when you're making stuff like this, you put anything on it that you are trying to gather um, into it that's not native. So like what's native will be the user that created it if there's a user like so if you have people log in and it will have them do that um one other thing you could do if you're trying to do something like this if you're trying to have somebody have a pet or you're trying to associate pets to people is you could associate them using their unique ids which we would need another page for let's just create that so say i wanted to attach a pet to a person like my list of customers so i'll just put this in here customer and i'll put another one pet pet name and then i'll put another drop down for pet type will be dog or cat. All right, so I have customer, I have pet name, um, but maybe a customer has multiple pets. So I wanna enter them one time and then I wanna be able to add pets to the customer after that. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a quick drop down, and there's other ways you'd want to do this too for pulling up um, specific people. Likely you'd have more people or more customers in than you'd want to have in a drop down, but we can just do dynamic choices, users, um, do a search for users, and then it will be the user's first name. We could add more to it, but we could do first name, last name. We'll just do first name for now. And We'll then do 
the ability then to go in and you could add them to users. So let me show you here. So I just pulled a list of users. So any users I've created in this will show up now in this list. So I've got two users I created, one and fake. They would show up in this list. But say I don't want them to be users. Say I just want them to be customers. That's a different kind of data, right? So I can create just, let me see if I have customers already created in here. Don't. So I'll make a new customers field and we'll make this list customers. And then we'll do something. Oops. Tiny, tiny box. Get rid of that. Put something here for attach. Pet to customer. Great. So what I want to do is have this button. Create a create a customer, and we'll just have a name. That will be a text field. And now we want to go back here. We want this to do a couple different things. So we want this first. We want this to now be customer, and we want to do a search for customers. And we want to grab the customer's name. Great, so this list will be a list of customer's names. So we'll put them in here. They'll show up there to be chosen. This is really just existing somewhere to enter like a new customer we would have. And this would be for their pet name. And this would be for their pet type, which would be dog or cat. And then we want to save this. So saving this is how it's going to operate a little bit differently. So we are going to have now a pet that we're going to create. So let's create this. Totally new thing. We'll call it a pet. And we will have it pet type. Let's do text. And then we also are going to need a way to associate back to the owner. So input, oops, input drop down or sorry drop down pet type and then this one will be we'll do pet name before I forget about it again. Pet name input pet name great and then we need pet owner. And you might be thinking well if I put in a pet owner then why don't I just make that pet owner their name? Well Say so you have two people named Dan Jones, right, that are your customers, and you pull them up. Well, every pet that either Dan, either of the Dan Jones that are your customers would pull up with that, um, you're going to have a lot of data that's going to be duplicated, right? So it'd be like t saying everyone with a pet named Rocky, all the data for all the Rockies go under each other, right? That's probably a lot of different pet data. So what you can do is you use the unique user IDs or unique um, identifiers. So if we go in here, we could do the drop down B, so values, unique ID. And what that means is because that drop down B is right here, right? This is drop down B. So what I'm saying here is Drop down B's value, that would be the customer I put in. So I'm going to put a customer, I'm going to put Joe into there. Joe has a unique ID associated to him. He's the only the only piece of data in this system, in all of Bubble, will have that unique ID is Joe. So Joe, I'm basically saying, let's grab Joe's unique ID. So if I wanted to say who is Rocky's owner, I can then say it is Joe because only one record would have that. And it's a way of attaching records by having them associate to each other. So I want to say create. This is who I want to attach it to. This is the pet's name. This is the data I want. So it's going to be two things. One thing one, thing two, connected. And let's do repeating group down here to show that association. So 
I want to have this data be ah, let's do customer great we'll pull a list of you know what no nope. let's do pets let's pull a list of pets there great so this is going to be the current cells pets pet name and then if I do here, the, you can just hear my pet probably there in the background. Current sells pet, pet owner. And I'm going to show you what that ends up looking like. So we're going to have to do things a little bit differently for what that other field is, but I'm going to show you what we're starting with here. So how we figure out how to associate those together. So Hank Hill. Now customer. Why didn't Hank Hill show up? Let's go back and figure out what we We didn't actually tell it to give anything a name. So this is input customer's value. Great. Now let's go back here. Oh, we have to refresh. There we go. Let's try this again. Hank Hill. He's added. There we go. See, there's a blank one here because I entered nothing in. I want to avoid that. We can delete that out of the data too. So I want to give this pet to Hank Hill. This will be Rufus because Rufus keeps making noise behind me. And Rufus is a dog. We told it to create that, right? So let's see what happened there. So I pushed this button, which should have taken all of this data, created a new pet, which should have sent the pet data to here, and we didn't search for a source. Sorry, getting a little bit ahead of myself today. So we need to do a data. We need to give this a source of data. So even though we defined it as a pet type, um, a type of content was pet, we have to do a search. And we have to do a search for a pet. And then we want to just grab pets, all general. So just all pets. If we just do a search for pets, we're good. So now let's go back. There we go. So we have Rufus, and this is Rufus's owner. But it's actually Rufus's owner's unique ID. We don't want that. That doesn't help us. That doesn't help us know who to call. That doesn't know, know who owns Rufus. Um, so what we can do here is instead of current sales pet owner, let's delete all that out, we would do a search for a customer. And we'll do a search based on their unique ID. And their unique ID needs to equal current sales pets pet owner, right? So, and then because that's just giving us the customer, right? So we're saying this cell has a pet, in it, right? That pet has a field and that field says, this is who owns me. So we're looking and we're saying who in our list of customers also has this as their unique ID. Great. That would be Hank Hill. And then we know we're referencing that customer and we want his name. And obviously you can do any other data. You can have name, phone number, email, anything you want. Um, and it just makes it easier to associate them. So you could even do a thing where you'd make um, two search boxes and one would be for pet, one would be for owner. So you could search I want to search Rufus, and then I want to search Rufus's with owners named Hank, and then I can pull up every Rufus with an owner named Hank to make sure I have the right Rufus with the right Hank. All right. I think that kind of covers everything I can think of to do um, with that question. Hope that was helpful. Hope you learned something here. I like using unique ideas to divide data and call references a lot, so you have a great day.